All right, so welcome to um, <laughs> Math 140. This is Math 140. Oh, don't say that. Okay, Math 140 Business, um, uh, lecture number seven, on September 21st, the last day of summer. What an exciting day that is. And we are, I am I sharing? I'm not sharing. So let me start sharing. And we are going to start chapter four. In fact, we're probably going to finish chapter four because it is a very straightforward, short chapter with very little math. And the math that's on it is all calculator slash computer math, which means we don't even have to, oh. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm, mm, okay. I know who to fail. All right, so chapter four. Chapter four on scatter plots. Scatter plots and correlation. Okay, chapter four on scatter plots and correlation. So up until now, when we have been talking about a var variables, we've had categorical variables, we've had um, quantitative variables, but any example that we did was one variable at a time. Here's a variable. Oh, okay, let's calculate its mean, let's calculate its median or its deviation or its uh, IQR, or are there outliers? Okay, here's another one. Let's do all the same stuff again. We haven't yet dealt with relationships between variables. Um, for example, do you expect just intuitively, if I were to go to a pediatrician's office and ask for data on ages of children and how tall they are, do you expect that as the ages change, the heights of the children change with it? Or do you expect no connection between the two of them? You expect a connection? You certainly expect a connection. I mean, that's just, that's the world we live in. Um, and here's another one that uh, yeah, you may or may not expect a connection. If people own more cars, if I would, would, would calculator or measure how many cars people own, should that have any connection to how long they live? Do I expect there to be a connection between those? No. Well, actually, statistically, there is a connection. People who own more cars statistically live longer than people who own fewer cars. That is a statistical fact. People who own more cars tend to live longer. Now, does that mean that if I really want to live longer, I should go out and buy more cars? No, it's because so, they're rich and have better health care. Sorry, exactly. Because they're rich, they have better health care. So there is an underlying connection that might not necessarily be so obvious when you just look at your original two variables, which are in this case, number of cars and length of life. There are variables lurking behind the scenes, literally called lurking variables. And these lurking variables that lurk behind the scenes might explain the connection between two variables. But in general, what you have is you're going to have a coordinate system. And that looks that's flat. I can't tell. No, I still did. You're going to have a coordinate system. And you'll have your horizontal axis and you're gonna have your vertical axis. And we're gonna put what's called the explanatory variable on the horizontal axis. And we're gonna put the response variable on the Y axis. The response variable, this is the one that's actually measured. And when I say measured, I also just mean calculated. Like, you know, uh, if I'm measuring how tall they are based upon their age, the explanatory variable, these are the ones that you adjust manually or you, uh, maybe those are not great words to you adjust, but essentially it's the independent variable. It's the one that every individual will have its own uh, value. And hopefully that explanatory variable explains the response, which is why we call it the explanatory variable. 
it explains the response. So this is the independent variable, independent. And the response variable is dependent. It depends upon the explanatory variable. And what we're going to have is called a scatter plot. And essentially what a scatter plot is, is a collection of dots. And each dot is a individual. Each dot is an individual, right? So each dot is one individual. And the dot will have an X value and it's gonna have a Y value. It's gonna have a value for the mm -hmm. explanatory variable and it's gonna have a value for the response variable. So far so good, any questions so far? No, thank you. You're welcome. No. Okay, so when we have this scatter plot, we want to be able to analyze it both graphically and mathematically and determine whether there's a connection between the explanatory variable and the response variable and what kind of connection that might be. So different scatter plots will be will have different forms than others. Okay, but the general idea of a scatter plot, does that seem intuitive and does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Yes. So first the key point, and this is one of those conceptual questions that people get wrong on tests, is that for a scatter plot to work, both variables must be quantitative. The scatter plots only apply to two quantitative variables. Okay, you can't do math and and calculate values for categorical variables. You can only do it for quantitative variables, like for example, age and height. Those are both quantitative. Number of cars and length of life. Those are both quantitative. Scatter plots only apply to two quantitative variables. However, however, they can include categorical data. They can include categorical data. Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, let's think of the example that we just talked about, which was I go to the uh, pediatrician's office and I have, uh, I have all these data points. I have a hundred, a thousand, whatever number of data points. And I have, um, I have age on the horizontal axis and I have uh, height on the vertical axis. And I have all my data points. And I notice when I'm looking at them that there's two distinct patterns, depending on which dots I look at. Can anyone think of a way of taking all those dots and recognizing that different categories might have different patterns within the two quantitative variables themselves, age, height. But if I look at the individuals, I might want to categorize them somehow. Can anyone think of it intuitively I might do that for this particular example? Adolescents, adults. I'm sorry? Maybe you can categorize them in like adolescents and then adults. Uh, certainly one way would be adolescents versus adults because I know, and this is a great example. I know that when kids are born till they're, I don't know, 10 or so, they grow pretty quickly, right? So they grow, you know, as the age increases, the height increases, you know, somewhat consistently. But once kids kind of get to a certain age slash height, what happens? Does it continue to grow forever at the same rate? No, it kind of gets stunted and then there's like a growth spurt. Right, so maybe I want to take that into account. So maybe I want to say, well, let's focus on the adolescents versus the adults and see if the two different patterns um, might lend some additional insights into the situation. Can anyone think of anything else besides a way of categorizing by adults versus adolescents? 
another way that I might want to separate the data points. Uh, ethnicity, possibly. Possibly, ethnicity. Um, different nationalities tend to grow faster than others, or at least they're taller. What about gender? Is gender something that might lend insight if I separate it by yes, gender? It works. So there's there can be many ways to add categories to a scatter plot. And the question is, how do I do that? How do I look at a scatter plot or from designing my own scatter plot? How do I design a scatter plot where I can separate the points, the individual points, into different categories? There's really two ways. What are the two ways to do that? Maybe make them into different colors. Different yeah. colors. Or if filled way, or not filled. I'm sorry? Like the dots are filled or not filled? Or, or in general, different shapes. Squares, triangles, dots, stars, right? So the two different ways, I can say by using multiple colors or multiple shapes. But even if I do that, the underlying data is still quantitative. You can't have a scatter plot unless it's quantitative on the horizontal axis and quantitative on the vertical axis. Okay, you cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, you cannot have a scatter plot because we got to do math with this stuff. But I might eventually want to add um, um, categories because maybe I'll see some insights that I wouldn't see if I lump all of them together. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Yeah, everyone, anyone have a question on that? <clears throat> okay. No, no, so, okay, so now interpreting scatter plots. Okay, interpreting scatter plots. We're looking at a scatter plot and we want to be able to give it some um, interpretation. Now, if you recall, in one of the earlier chapters, we had symmetry or right skewed or left skewed as the shape of a normal distribution, right? We had form, we had how spread out it was and where the center was. We were able to give some descriptions to it. So same thing here. We're going to want to give some descriptions to a scatter plot. And the first one that we look for, we're looking at the overall pattern. And there's really three parts of the overall pattern. There's the direction, the form, and the strength. So when I look at a scatter plot, the three things that I'm looking for right away, uh, I guess and you could add to this whether or not there's outliers or deviations, outliers slash deviations. Okay. Is there anything there? that seems like it doesn't belong. You have an overall pattern, you know, let's say I do this, you know, I have this wonderful pattern here and then I have that, All right? So everything is wonderful, looks very linear. And then there's some point off in the middle of nowhere, All right? So I'm looking for deviations from whatever pattern I think exists. For direction, essentially we have two directions, positive versus negative. What do you think I mean, or the book means, when it says positive versus negative when it comes to, um, when it comes to um, slope. Scatter, scatter plot, huh? Like the slope, if it's going. Yeah, exactly. If the, if, the, if the scatter plot looks something like this, I would call it a positive. And if it looks something like this, that would be negative, right? positive versus negative. Okay. Then there's form. What do you think I mean by form? What do I mean by the form of a scatter plot? Anyone maybe, think? maybe how maybe how tightly together the, the dots are that's actually the strength strength oh, okay that's actually the strength which we'll get to in a minute the form is a little different the strength is how how, how tight how tight it is to the form that you think it is like if i think it looks like a certain shape how close to that 
perfect shape is it? That will be the strength of the scatter plot. The, okay. form, the form is a difference between something like this and something like this. Both of them have a pattern. But what's the difference between the patterns? What's the one on the left? Linear. Linear. And the one on the right? As far as we're concerned in this course, we're going to lump all the other patterns into just nonlinear. I mean, there certainly are different types of nonlinear. Is it quadratic? Is it cubic? Is it exponential? Is it logarithmic? Is it sinusoidal? Either this, is it that? But for us, either it looks like a line or it does not look like a line. That's the form. Okay, linear or not linear is all we meant, all, the, all we care about. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, and then we have the strength. And essentially the strength is how uh, close to, um, to, I'm gonna say perfection here. But essentially what I mean by that is if you think it's linear and you say this is the line that is the true representation that's going on behind the scenes, how close are we to that ideal? Are we right along it so that's very linear? Are we kind of some wishy-washiness? Thank you. Is that, are we moderate? Are we weak? All right, so the three basic categories are strong, moderate, and weak. Now, you have to be very careful about that because sometimes you can look at a graph and think it's strong, moderate, or weak, or actually do the math and get a different result. So we certainly want to look at the graphs to kind of have a first impression. But at the end of the day, you're going to let the math decide how strong it is because the math doesn't care about your perception. The math doesn't care about the scale that you use. All the math cares about is the data points. You plug into a formula or have your calculator do it for you. Out pops a number. We look at that number and we say, oh, strong or moderate or weak and so on. So we don't gotta do it ourselves and we will do it. We, we certainly will do it today um, as soon as we get to the second half of the chapter. So are there any questions so far? No, sir. So far so good? Okay, well, then moving right along, let's go ahead now and jump to that second half of the chapter, which is that promised uh, formula for the correlation between two variables. How much are they correlated? How much are they connected? Now, just be very careful. This is a very important result or a very important mantra that you can say to yourself at night before you go to sleep so you don't forget it. Correlation does not imply causation. Just because two things are correlated does not mean one causes the other. If I have more cars, uh, it's correlated with living longer. It does not mean that having more cars causes me to live longer. Having more cars is an indication of wealth, which is an indication of presumably better healthcare, which is an indication that I'm gonna leave longer. It doesn't cause it. Here's another one that's very famous. You are more likely to get attacked by a shark when having ice cream, or if you've had ice cream that day versus not having had ice cream that day. You're more likely to get attacked by a shark when you have ice cream than when you don't. That's because you're closer to a beach. <laughs> well, yes, there's people who have ice cream tend to have ice cream on hot days. Maybe they're at the beach where the sharks are, etc. There's a connection between them. But it doesn't mean that the shark's like, oh, ice cream. Let's get that one. Right? That's not how it works. That'd be kind of cool if it was, but it's not. So correlation does not imply causation. Just because things are correlated does not necessarily mean that one causes the other. Also, correlation, so I'm gonna write here a few things. One, correlation does not imply causation. That's number one. 
It does not imply it. It might, it might, it might be true. It just does not imply it. The other one is correlation only gives the strength of linear association. If I have a graph that looks like this, if this is my data set, would you think that that is a linear relationship? No. No. And does it look like there is a relationship? Yes. Yes, it's very sine wave looking. But if I do the math to calculate the correlation, it will probably tell me that there's no relationship because correlation only gives the strength of linear association. If it's non-linear, you got to do other stuff, which we're not going to we're not going to cover. Okay? But for non-linearity, don't use the formula for co uh, for correlation. It'll be nonsense. It'll give you nothing that makes sense. In fact, if you do decide to use the formula for correlation, it's recommended that you always graph it so that you have a, a belief going in that it should be linear. So recommended, recommended to always, always graph the scatter plot to convince yourself that the relationship is linear. Before calculating the correlation. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay, so now what is the formula for the correlation? <clears throat> so first, your data will be pairs. There's n individuals. Each individual has an x value and a y value. So you have x1, y1. You have x2, y2, all the way through xn, yn. Do we agree? Yes. OK, so here's the correlation. You take each x value, subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation for x. Do the same thing for the y's. Multiply corresponding pairs, add them all together, and then divide by n minus 1. This is the formula for correlation. Is that s, y? S sub y, yes, the standard deviation for the y variable, and S sub x is the standard deviation for the x variable. Okay, thank you. And so the line on top indicates the mean, right? Or yes, yes. Okay. So you're calculating. Uh, you had before you can do anything. You got to calculate x bar, y bar, S sub x, and S sub y, and then you plug everything into this formula, and out will pop the correlation. Now, I don't know about you, but I certainly would not want to do this by hand. So what I'm going to teach you right now is how to do it both on the calculator and how to do it on the computer. So let's start first with the calculator. So hopefully you all have, uh, here it is. Hopefully you all have your TI handy. Yes, do we all have it? Everyone? Yes. Okay. Because I'm going, to demonstrate, I'm going to demonstrate on this. Okay. So first we need an example. So I'm going to first put the example up. I should have done that first. And then we will do it on my calculator. So 
here's an example. This is an example about, uh, it's on page 107 of the book. It's about uh, coral reefs. This is about coral reefs. And apparently, scientists wanted to uh, wanted to calculate the relationship or see if there is a relationship between the temperature of the water and the growth rate of the coral reefs and whether or not there was a connection between them. And it got the following, it had the following data. It said a 29.68 degrees Celsius. Um, it grew at 2.63 centimeters per year or millimeters per year, sorry, millimeters per year. And um, that's the first data point. And then when it was another part was 29.87 and that grew at 2.58. And then we had 30.16 and that grew at 2.68. And then we have 30.22 and that was 2.60. And then we had 30.48, and that was 2.48. And then we had 30.65, and that was 2.38. And finally, the last one was 30.90, and that grew at 2.26. Okay, so this is our data. So I'm gonna stop sharing in a second so I can show you my calculator. So I would recommend please to, um, to copy that. I'll see what page you did you say this is on? 107. Okay, with me? Did everyone, um, so did everyone um, copy it? At least those who are with me. Yes. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing now. Show. Sorry, what was that? I think we're all just saying yes. Okay. Okay, so here's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna hit stat. You should find the stat button in the middle on the top third row third column it's stat and that should take you to a screen that looks like this and we're going to put in our data so we're going to edit so we're going to hit enter right off the bat right away put uh, hit edit and that takes us to this screen where we have the opportunity to put in some lists so for list one we're going to do our explanatory variable what is our explanatory variable here which of these two temperature or growth which one do we think would explain the other? Temperature. So temperature is the explanatory variable. So in the first column, I'm going to put in one, two, three, seven data points. Yeah. In the first column, I'm going to put in my data points. And then in the second column, L2, what do you think I'm going to put in there? L3. I'm gonna put in my growth rate, my response variable. And I, I gotta put them in order. I gotta match the pairs up. So make sure you do the same order for both. Not chronological or random. It's gotta be the same order. Okay. So this is what I have so far. We agree? Yes. Okay. Now, hit second. And in the very top left, you should see stat plot. Okay, so hit second and then hit stat plot. And turn your first plot from on, so from off to on. So if you go to your first plot, you want to turn it from off to on, you want the on to be um, highlighted. Everyone with me? Wait, so we pressed we press second and what, sorry, Professor? 
stat plot, the top left button. Okay. And then the very first one you want to click on, go into it, and you want to make sure that it goes to on, not off. Okay. With me? Yes. Okay. Next, on the top row, hit window. And we're going to set our X min and our X max and our Y min and our Y max. So look at all the X values. What's the lowest X value we have? 29.68. And what's the highest X value that we have? 30.90. Okay, so I'm gonna set my X min to 29 and my X max to 31. That will make sure that I encompass all of my data points in the X direction. <clears throat> okay, and what is your, um, what is your smallest Y value and your biggest Y value? What did you put as your X window? Sorry. I did X min 29, X max 31. Thank you. I think 2.26, right? 2.26 is the smallest. And what's your, what's your um, biggest X? 68, 2.68. Okay, so I did two to three. They're all, they're all in the twos, right? So I did two to three. Correct? Correct. And then hit graph. What do you see? There's kind of like a downward slope. All right, hopefully you see this, correct? <clears throat> yeah. So that is your scatter plot. Now, do we think from looking at that scatter plot that this graph might be linear or close to linear? Yes. Okay. So if we're convinced that it looks linear, now we're going to go ahead and calculate the correlation. To do that, hit the stat button again. But this time, go right to calculate or calc. <laughs> and you should, <clears throat> excuse me, you should see this list here. Yes? Yes. So go down to the fourth one, lin reg AX plus B. And then get to the bottom and hit calculate. Now, when I do it, this is what I see. If you do not see the same thing, speak up. So I can walk you through how to make sure that you can see this. Uh, I don't see the same thing. Okay, you just have the A and the B, correct? Yes. Okay, are there others in the same boat? Yep. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Hit seconds. And in the very bottom, you should see catalog. Correct? Yes. So yes. hit catalog. And now you should see this thing here. Go all the way down to diagnostic on. If you hit the, the down button, you can just scroll pretty quickly. And go until you see diagnostic on. You there? Yes. Hit enter and then enter again until it says done. Okay. Okay, now I'll try again. Stat, calc, linreg AX plus B, calculate. What do you see now? I see exactly what you were showing. Okay, so you should have an R value of negative 0.8635 and so on. Correct? Yes. Okay, which tells you, what does the negative sign tell you in the correlation? the negative slope it's a negative slope okay now what i also want you to do even though this is technically not till next chapter but we'll do it now copy your a down a is negative 0.303 approximately and calculate your b or copy your b which is 11.692 approximately right that should be your a and your b that you have correct yeah 
And we have y equals ax plus b as your first line, right? Yes. So what I want you to do is write down that equation, OK? y equals negative 0.303x plus 11.692. AX plus B. With me so far? Yes. Now, the top left button, hit Y equals. And I want you to put in that equation, negative 0.303X plus 11.692. The X button, by the way, is just to the left of stat on the top or the third row. So far is it good, guys? Yes. Now hit graph again. What do you see? What do you see? It gave me a syntax error. Uh-oh. Um, so you don't see this? No, it gave me a syntax error. Let me see if I did what I did wrong. Try y equals again? Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Let me see, what you, or tell me what you have for y equals. Did you do minus or negative? Because if you do a minus I, sign, it's I a sign. Have, yeah, I think I might have done the minus sign instead of the negative. Yeah. Real quick. Typical rookie mistake. Dumbledore would never make that mistake. <sighs> no, not even a laugh. Lorena, nothing? Fine. Be like that. Oh, that was yeah. a good one to be yeah, nice. But we're all muted, that's why. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Okay, so... You should see this right here. That's called the best fit line. This is what chapter five is all about. So we're kind of touching a little bit on chapter five. But uh, the best fit line is essentially saying, if it truly is linear, this line out of all possible lines is the best line I can possibly draw through the data points. The best fit line. So this process not only allows us to calculate the correlation, but it also allows us to calculate the best fit line. So this chapter and the next chapter are really intimately connected, chapter four and chapter five. Okay, are there any questions on anything we've done so far? No. Are you going to review some of the questions I had on the homework, if that's okay? Or you mean the you last wanna... homework? Uh, th yeah, chapter three. But would you want to do it now or towards the end? Well, after I finish what I'm, th this lesson. Okay. Uh, ideally, in the future, when I say in the beginning, are there any questions, that's the time to ask them. Okay. Um, but certainly not right now in the middle, but right, wait apologies. till the end. Right. Okay. Is that, is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so, is there, based upon this R value, is there, does this imply, does this imply, a strong, moderate, or weak correlation? That's the question. So in order to answer that, we do have to know a little bit more about correlation. And here's one fact about correlation. Correlation is always between negative one and one. It is impossible mathematically for the correlation to be outside of that range. A one would imply perfect linearity. It's positive correlation and it literally falls on a line. You can't get any better than perfect correlation. Of course, negative one would be in the opposite direction. It still is perfect correlation. It just goes down instead of going up. Zero, which is right in the middle, is as uncorrelated as it gets. It's a blob of points and you look at it and you say, 
what line? There's no line here. So zero is no correlation. One and negative one is perfect correlation. So on the scale between zero and one or negative one and zero is gonna be the moderate, the weak and the strong. Based upon the value of negative 0.86, would you think that we have moderate, strong, or weak correlation? Strong. Strong. So it actually turns out that that's moderate. To be, to be strong, I mean, there's no reason you should know this because 0.86, it seems very close to one. I mean, I mean, if one's the best, 0.86 is very close to one. So actually what I want you to calculate is what's called the R squared value. And the R squared value is nothing more than taking your R value and squaring it. So if we take the R value and we square it, what do we get? What is our R value? Negative 0.8636 squared. Anyone? If you have a calculator, this should be a calculator problem. What is it? 0.8636 squared. 0 0.7458. 0 0.7458 approximately. So if your R squared value is over about 0.8 or so, then, and, and we're going to give specific numbers in chapter five. Right now, I'm just, I'm just touching upon the subject. But in order to have strong correlation, you really need an R squared value greater than 0.8. Some would even say 0.85. We'll give a specific value when we get there. 0.7 is moderate strong. It's not quite strong, but in the moderate range, it's certainly on the stronger side. But again, there's no reason that you should know that because we, we haven't covered it yet. But what we're gonna see is that the R squared value, R squared is the best measure of strength of correlation. First, it doesn't care if your underlying R, it doesn't care if your underlying R is positive or negative because when you square it, that's gonna go away anyway. All it cares about is strength. It also has a much deeper meaning, which we'll get to in chapter five, okay? Um, so a few more things. If you switch, if you switch the explanatory and response variables, the correlation does not change. Because remember, correlation does not mean causation. It just says, is there a connection between the two variables? So if you switch them, mathematically, you get the same correlation. So if I said, oh, does growth rate affect temperature? I mean, it's, it's, a, it, it's a silly even to ask, why would growth rate affect temperature versus the other way around? But you do the math, you get the same correlation coefficient. <clears throat> okay, next. Correlation does not depend on units of measurement. So if I take my data in feet and then I switch my data to inches, everything will change in just the right way that your correlation coefficient will be exactly the same. Correlation does not depend upon measurements. Question so far. No. Does this everyone agree? No questions. We're all we're all good on this so far. Yes. Anyone? Yes. Yes. Okay. Ooh, okay. So what I want to do now is just go through some pictures. And 
I'm going to use uh, as, um, the other book because it's easy for me to, to, to load it up, but it's the same, same distributor. So it's essentially the same pictures. <clears throat> but I want to show you some different scatter plots that have different correlation coefficients. So when you look at these six scatter plots, which of them looks the most linear to you? i.e. the tightest around an actual line. Bottom right? The bottom right. Bottom right, yeah. In the bottom right, you know, clearly the bottom right. And look at that correlation coefficient. It's extremely close to negative one, right? Extremely close to negative one, which gives you an R squared value that's also extremely close to positive one, which means it's very, very strongly linear. And you can see by looking that it's strongly linear. Which one is the next most? Um, linear in the in the in the bunch. The one next to it. The one next to it, which, by the way, you'll notice has a positive correlation coefficient because it's on the way up, versus the first one, which is on the way down. Um, but you can also tell just by looking that it's not quite as tightly packed as the first one was. So its correlation coefficient is a little lower, 0.9. I mean, uh, when I say lower, I mean magnitude wise, magnitude wise lower. 0.9, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then as we go up to negative 0.7, we see it's going down again, but it's even looser. By the time we reach 0.5, which is only halfway between one and zero, I'm not saying you don't see a line there, but it's not the easy, like you wouldn't quite call it linear, I don't think. And if you do, it would certainly be weakly linear. Right. I mean, yes, if anything, it is going up, but it's kind of loose there. And I think hopefully you agree with what I'm, my, my assessment. And what is the R squared value for 0.5? If R is 0.5, what's R squared? 0.25? I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, no, 0.25, which you can see is, is I mean, you can see an R of 0.5 when you square it. It, it's half as much as it was before. Your R squared value is, is a better measure of correlation because 0.5, you think, oh, it's halfway, it should be moderate, but its square value is 0.25. It's so close to zero in comparison. And if you go to the top left where the correlation is zero, would you even suggest a line there? No. I, I mean, uh, yeah. There's nothing, I mean, even the one to the right of that, mm -hmm. which is correlation negative 0.3, even that, it's, it's kind of hard to suggest a line. I mean, yeah, okay, if I had to pick one, I can kind of see it being negative. Uh, but even that is like, are you sure? So by the time correlation passes 0 0.5, it's already, it's already weak. And even negative 0.7, is is moderate so we're gonna we're gonna do more of this in the next chapter when we you know give kind of numbers like between here and here it's strong and between here and here it's moderate and between here and here it's weak but even those numbers are not fixed in stone if you do the google search for uh correlation coefficients and how it relates to strength you're gonna get different answers different boundaries, depending on the website you go to. It's, it, there's no one hard, fast rule which applies to across the board for you know statistics in general. Um, does that make sense? Are there any questions on, on, on what I just went over and anything that we've done so far? No. Nope. Mm. OK. Uh, so that is chapter four and a little chapter five. That so we're done. Is, well, somebody did have some questions that they would like me to answer about chapter three. So why don't we go ahead and do that? And uh, I know you're all excited to leave, and I get that. But perhaps you'll be able to glean some information if you stay. So, uh, and the quiz, by the way, for the next chapter, um, uh, I just posted it. Uh, it. It is up, and it is due... Um, uh, before next class. I set a, a time limit of 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. 
So uh, you, it's 10 questions like the last one. And I think it's easier. I tried to make it a little bit easier. Um, hopefully it is. And hopefully the scores will be better. But for now, what questions do you have on chapter three that you wanted me to go over? Sorry, um, did you say to do Thursday, next Thursday? Uh, in two days, this Thursday. Oh, this Thursday. Okay, thanks. Yeah, 10 questions. Uh, is it going to be under assignments? Oh, I got to I gotta link it to Canvas. One second. Let me do that quick. Give me a second. I got to link it to, uh, to Canvas. Uh, so is it an infinite time limit? Like there's no time limit until that day? Until Thursday, I mean? I think so. Is that what I did for the last one? No. Uh, last time we did it in class. During class, we had the time limit. Oh, I gave you in class last time? Yeah. Oh. Well, do you want to do that now? <laughs> no. Not really. <laughs> Shouldn't have asked anything. Sorry. Guys. You want to have you want to have a couple of days so you guys can cheat for it? Okay, that makes sense. I mean, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, if you promise me you won't cheat, then I'll give you till Thursday to do it. Do you promise. all promise? I mean, we just need time to study yes. a little bit more. Because do you, you know. pinky swear? Pinky swear. Pink okay. Pinky, it is. Okay, pinky swears. That's the most most sacred form of swearing. So make sure that that you that you uh, abide by it. Meanwhile, what questions do you have on chapter three that you'd like to go over? Um, it's the third question. I don't know if you have it up. It's the third question. I don't. Why don't you share your screen? Sure. That'll be the easiest way. So it's this one. It says. To find the value v of a standard normal variable that satisfies, oh, no, fine, okay. Find the number z such that the proportion of observations less than z is 0.3. Oh, okay, well, we did that. Go to second distribution, normal CDF. No, sorry, second distribution, inverse normal. Okay, so again, second distribution, inverse normal, because I'm going from the probability back to z, so I'm going in the opposite direction. I'm going to have my area be 0.3, mu zero, sigma one, paste. What do I get? Negative 0.52. Boom, done. Aren't calculators grand? Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, okay. Well, I'm glad we had this talk. That was really exciting and uh, I hope very fulfilling for all of you. Okay. Any other questions? By the way, don't just copy don't just say oh the answer is negative 0.52 bam there's the answer listen oh okay so every one of these every one of these answers is probably on on chegg or slater or or uh, um uh, yahoo answers or google this i'm sure if you google them every one of these questions is going to pop up somewhere okay that's just the nature of these these programs that was... have, been, have been in place for years if you one second if you just look up the answers and you copy them, you're not learning in the process. And when it comes time to the tests, it's gonna, it's gonna show. You, you, you really should be working on these without just looking at answers. Anyways, that's my spiel, do what you want. Okay, what's your question? Okay, because I, so I was told to use this table. Uh, you don't need to use that table, use a calculator. Okay, so you wait, said- wait, 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 but if you wanna use this table, find point three. There it is. It's right there. Keep going down a little bit with your cursor. Don't scroll down. No, no, don't, don't scroll, just your cursor. It's a 0.3 or negative 0.3? But you're looking for a Z. So you're looking for 0.3 in the table, not on the side. Find oh. 0.3 in the table. Scroll down, down. I mean, I don't scroll. I, I didn't mean scroll. I mean, move your cursor down. Down, 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 stop. Move it to the right, move it to the right, move it to, there we go. A little more, because now I can't see it. What's that thing? So it's this one, uh, it's 0.3015. No, it's 0.3. Okay. Which is between 0.3015 and 0.2981. Now, what Z value approximately corresponds to that? Uh, point five negative point five. Negative 0.5. I'm sorry, and then point zero two. 
So negative 0.52 or negative 0.53, somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. And because only one answer in your in your in your homework was anywhere near there, that that's the answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Any other questions? No questions. Does that mean you all want to move on to the next chapter or do you want to leave early? <laughs> leave early. Oh, you failed that one. You bombed that. You bombed that question. <laughs> that was a test and you did not pass. But would you rather teach another chapter or go watch The Walking Dead? That's a good question. Oh. <laughs> Got you there. Got you. Reverse Big reverse. time. You guys think I wasn't doing it during class the whole time? But you guys were working on problems? What do you think that is, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Know, it's been on pause the whole time. What was that? What do you ask? I was like, is that a pause screen I see? It is a pause scene. See, yes, that's this week's episode. Yeah, I don't even know why I still watch it. I mean, it's it's. I stopped watching after like season three. Four. Yeah, but I I'm like a little OCD, so uh, you know if I start watching something, I have to finish it. Do you know how many TV shows I have on my to do list that I watch? Um, I think I'm at like thirty seven or something like that. Have you watched Breaking Bad? Of course. Now, what kind of question is that? Are you watching Better Call Saul? Oh, what kind of question is that? These are just I mean... silly questions. Well, of course, yeah. of course I am. Of course. Still with questions all day long. If you guys want to know the best TV shows you should be watching right now, and we okay. watch the two best TV shows are Ted Lasso and Barry. And if you're not watching them, you you're just wrong. That's what, what it comes down to. Barry is season three. They, they filmed season three. Hasn't come out yet. But uh, oh. yeah, I mean, just yes. Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. I watched the first episode. I'm watching The Sopranos, so I go watch. Sopranos. You don't like the Sopranos? I do not like the Sopranos. Can I ask why? Because I, I didn't like the characters. They were just they weren't they weren't people that I cared for. They were just you didn't care just, about the characters? No, I didn't care about anyone on that show. They were just horrible people. It's kind of like that show uh, um Sons of Anarchy. Just okay. bad Anarchy. people. Okay, that show sucks. Okay, okay. Okay, just bad people. They're just not like they're not people that I care for anyway so i watch any sports someone asks i don't watch sports i play sports i i've been playing sports my whole life i know you look at me now you're like what, what do you play uh -huh, what do i play well when i was growing up in high school i was tri-varsity i played baseball basketball and football basketball you good at basketball i was no no i'm not but i was then um i tried a few years ago and going to like the the rec center at csun to play and I'm just too old now. These guys are just running by me. Like, I can't even keep up with them. It's like, okay, I'm done with that. So then in my 20s, I was a kickboxer. I was an amateur kickboxer. Nice. And I did that for, for a few years. And then I got into golf. And I did that for a few years. And my latest one is tennis. So I'm on three different tennis teams. And in fact, we're going to nationals whoop, whoop, next week. Congrats. Speaking, of, speaking of which, by the way, next Thursday night, uh, I might not be here because I'm going to Arizona for nationals. So uh, thank you. So um, um, congrats. Have, uh, good luck. Thank look you. At you. I know. Look at me, right? What? This guy? I know. Is, is have there... you ever seen Supernatural? Uh, I have not. Should I be watching Supernatural? No. You should, you should be watching C. What's C? Uh, 